Hunter, we don't have any statistics. Let's check our unofficial stats. All in favor of the uh, Giants. Here we are. Look at the first downs. Yards rushing. Oilers haven't had one passing yard today. <clears throat> There's your total yards. Well, hello. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to check out this video. And welcome to the Gridiron. Before I get started, I just want to say thank you so much to everyone out there who's been watching my videos. Thank you. If you can maybe give this video a thumbs up or possibly leave a comment below or maybe even share this video, it would mean so much to me. Anyway, just thank you so much for just taking time out of your day to check out this video. Thank you. Thank you. Well, the New York Giants. I, I've been keeping an eye on things. Um, there's not a, a, once again, not a lot to believe talk about it or go, you know, you know what I mean, as far as making much of a video. So um, so I'm going to continue my little series here, doing the, 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 the year by year of the Giants. Um, last year, I started doing the, uh, the yearly videos for the Giants, and I did the first 10 seasons last year. Pretty much it was during June and July when things were kind of dead, you know. Um, as, uh, as right now. So I picked up uh, a few days ago uh, with the 35 seasons, and now we're up to the 1939 season for the Giants, the 15th season in the history of the New York Giants. Um, going into 1939, the Giants were the defending champions. They'd beaten the Green Bay Packers, okay, 23 to 17 in the 1938 championship game. That gave the Giants their third NFL championship. Um, and into the 1938 season. Um, the Giants were once again um, Eastern Division champs in 1939, and once they went to the championship game, and once again they played the Packers back to back. But this time, the it was seven nothing. The Packers were winning at halftime, and the, the Giants didn't score at all. The Packers scored ten points in the third, ten points in the fourth, and they beat us. 27 to nothing. It was, you know, just an overall bad game. Um, but the interesting thing is that this is the th third year in a row. The third year in a row. The last game of the season was at the Polo Grounds. The third year in a row it was against the Washington Redskins. The thir <laughs> third year in a row, whoever won, they just you know, they, they were neck and neck the whole year. Whoever wound up winning the final game of the season uh, would go on to the championship game. Now, um, in 1937, uh, it was at the Polo Grounds. The, the Redskins came in. The Washington Redskins came in with Sammy Ball, and they 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 uh, beat us 49 to 14. Beat us by 35 points. Beat the Giants by 35 points. 1938, the last game of the season, Sammy Ball and the Washington Redskins came into the Polo Grounds once again, but this time the Giants won. 1937, the Redskins won by 35 points. 1938, the last game of the season, the Giants won by 36 points. So, uh, last game of the season, Polo Grounds, 1939, the Redskins came in, Sammy Ball, and the Giants won. Nine to seven. Redskins. Uh, I'll show you the. Uh, there's a news article. Uh, Redskins had a chance to kick a 15, <laughs> 15 yard field goal. I think it was 45 seconds left to go. They marched down the field, and they got in field goal range, 15 yards. He kicked it wide. If he, if he made it, the Redskins would have gone to the championship game. If not, you know, he didn't. You know, and uh, the Giants went to the championship game. So. But uh, all, all in all, it was, a, it was a very good season for the Giants. I mean, you, know, you, you can't hang your you know, head down. You know, they, they, they had a very good season in 1939. Now, if you include 19, 1939 season, okay, the Giants, you know, for the next 25 years were very good, okay? If you include the 1939 season, you go from 1939 to 1963, those 25 seasons right there, okay, the Giants would go to... 10 championship games. <sighs> Unfortunately, they would only win one time out of those 10 championship games, but they were very, you know, they were uh, every year, almost every year, they were competitive. Uh, 
but with their record and, and everything. But I mean, you know, um, in 25 seasons, they went to 10 NFL championship games. So they were, they were a very good team back then, you know. So let's take a deep dive, shall we, into the 1939 season for the New York Giants, which just happens to be the 15th season in the history of the New York Giants. All right, the New York Giants, the 1939 season. <sighs> All right, the 1939 season, the Giants was the 15th season in the history of the national, in their history, the 15th season in the National Football League. They finished, so you got here right here, they finished their record was 9-1-1. One and one. They were first in the NFL Eastern, and they lost the championship to the, to the uh, Green Bay Packers, 27 20, to nothing. So. But, uh, you know, this, this is how it played out. The, the first, uh, well, the first game they beat the Eagles. Then the second game they tied, the, they went to Washington, and they tied the Redskins. Zero zero. So the eat between the, the Redskins and the Giants, they each had a tie on their record. I'm going to show you the um, the Redskins record. But then the Giants started cruising. You know, they beat the Pirates and they beat the Eagles again. They beat they beat the Bears. That's always a tough game right there. And then they beat the Brooklyn Dodgers, who always seem to play the Giants tough. Uh, then they lost. They played. In Detroit, the Lions seem to kick the crap out of the Giants almost every year. This is a close game, 18 to 14, but the Giants always had a hard time with the, the Lions back then. Uh, then the Giants finished off with four victories, right? They beat the, the Chicago Cardinals, then they beat the Pittsburgh Pirates, who be, who would become the Steelers, and then they beat the Brooklyn Dodgers again, and setting up the last game of the season against the Washington Redskins, December 3rd, at the Polo Grounds, right? Now this is the uh, here's here's the um, the Redskins. Okay, so they Redskins were a very good team. Even if the Redskins, they went they went to play the Packers in Green Bay and they lost twenty four fourteen. So I mean the Packers were a very good team that year. But they beat the Eagles, then they tied the Giants. So after you know first two games, each team was one zero and one. Then they won a bunch of games, right? Then they lost to the Packers. Okay, so then they had, you know, they, so they, they lost to the Packers on October 29th. The Giants on November 5th lost to the, to the, to the Lions. So by November 5th, the Redskins had a tie and a loss, and the Giants had a tie and a loss. Then, then the Giants won, you know, the three games here. Same thing with the Redskins. Redskins won the next four, right? So they were, the, the Redskins were 8-1-1 one and one after the 10th game, right? And the Giants were eight one and one. Both teams eight one and one. Right, going to the last game at the Polo Grounds, the Giants wind up winning nine to seven. Sent them into the championship game. I'll go. There's an article. I'm gonna. I'll go over. But here we go. The 1939 season was the 20th regular season of the National Football League. Before the season, the NFL president Joseph Carr died, and Carl Stork was named to replace him. An NFL game was televised for the first time when NBC broadcast the October 22nd game between the Eagles and the Brooklyn Dodgers at Ebbets Field in Brooklyn. The Dodgers won 23 to 14. The experimental broadcast was broadcast only to viewers in New York and Albany. Regular broadcasting of NFL games would not begin until 1951. The season ended with Green Bay Packers defeating the New York Giants in the NFL championship game 27 to nothing. So. The 1939 draft was held on December 9th, 1938, at New York's New Yorker Hotel. With the first pick, the Chicago Cardinals selected center Kai Aldrich from Texas Christian University. Major rule changes. All right, what do we got? The penalty for an ineligible receiver who touches a forward pass is 15 yards and a loss of down. The penalty for an ineligible Receiver who is downfield prior to a forward pass being thrown is 15 yards and he lost it down. If a kickoff goes out of bounds after only being touched by members of the receiving team, the receiving team takes possession of the ball at the inbound spot. Okay. Then a division race. That's, you know, the top two teams were very good. I mean, between the Bears and the Packers, right, it was good. And between the Redskins and the Giants, it was good. 
All right, let's see. We got though both the Giants and the Packers finished the game ahead of their closest division rivals. Both clinched the divisions on December 3rd, the final day of the 11-game regular season. The Giants and the Redskins had played with a 0-0 tie earlier in the season, and both were 8-1-1 records when they met New York's Polo Grounds before a crowd of 62,404. The, the Giants did not reach the end zone, but their three field goals were enough for the 9-7 win and the division title. The Western Division race was between the Lions, the Bears, and the Packers. Detroit was unbeaten after four games, but on October 22nd, Green Bay beat them 26-7 to give them both records of 4-1-0. and same day, the 4-1 Bears lost 16-13 to the Giants to fall to 4-2. In Week 9, November 5th, the Lions beat the Giants, while the Bears beat the Packers, giving Detroit the lead at 6-1-0. The next week, November 12th, the Bears beat the Lions, and the Packers beat the Eagles, tying Detroit and Green Bay at 6-2, half a game ahead of the 6-3 Bears. On November 19th, the Lions lost to the Rams, while the Packers and and Bears both won. On November 26th, the Bears closed the season 8-3 and with a 48-7 win over the Cardinals, while the Packers edged the Rams 7-6 to to reach 8-2-0. and Wow. Green Bay was behind 7-3 at halftime in its season ender at Detroit. And a loss would have forced a playoff for Western Division, but Clark Hinkle's touchdown in the final quarter gave the Packers a 12-7 win and a division title. Wow. Hey, they, come, they come right down to the end down there in the championship game. Green Bay 27, Giants not at State Fair Park. Wow. No Lambeau Field that for those guys. The game was played on December 10th, 1939. The league leader, Davey O'Brien, Threw for 1,324 yards from the Eagles. The rushing, Bill Osmanski from the Bears, 699 yards. And Don Hudson, the Hall of Famer himself, uh, 846 receiving yards for the Green Bay Packers. Now, I've I seen it. This this was the third game. Uh, here, the third game of the season. I saw I've I seen this. This was incredible film footage right here. I mean, look, look at the color. 1939. That's There's the Lions. And there's the Brooklyn Dodgers right here. Simply amazing. Absolutely amazing. I mean, look at the color of that. I mean, whew. It was ten, they, got, they got 10 minutes worth of footage right here. But look at how close up it is and everything. I mean, man. It's almost in HD. I mean, look, look at this play right here. I think it's this play. One guy gets knocked out. He, I think he takes, a, he takes a, a knee to the helmet, to the head. Yeah, right here. See this guy right here? I think he, he, he got his helmet knocked off. I, I think the, the quarterback kneed him in the head. And as the play goes on, you see he's just laying there, and somebody comes over and tries to help him pick him up. And I like it. But yeah. Phew. Look at this guy right here. He's got a face mask. Right? This guy could have picked the pass off and ran it back for a touchdown, but he just knocked it down. I mean, phew. I mean, Deion Sanders, he's not. He could. And the Lions wind up winning this one 27 to 7, I think it was. But I mean, just got to show you. I mean, look, look at the color of this. It's unbelievable. I mean, all the other you know, high, you know, games you see from back then are all in black and white. But I mean, this was amazing. I, I saw this. And I was like, wow, this is incredible. Absolutely incredible. This was like the third game of the season. The Lions were very good back then. But I mean, look, you got the here's the ref, right? Absolutely incredible. I, lo I love watching that film footage. That was simply amazing. Then we got here's the here's the article. Okay, this is the, from the New York Times. The, the day after the Giants beat the uh, Redskins nine to seven, we got sixty two thousand five hundred thirty seat. The Giants beat the Redskins in a thrill pack game for Eastern title. Let's see, referee attacked as Giants win nine to seven. That we got right here. We got Ken Strong booted a placement from nineteen yard from the nineteen yard mark. Lehman's Tuffy Lehman's held the ball. It was for the second of New York's club three field goals. Barber fifteen is rushing in to block the kick, but it's too late. The ball, which is up here, whoop, with the arrow. So you see the ball right here. There's the ball. There's the arrow point to the ball. See he he got he got that baby up. I mean, damn, huh? So that was Ken Strong. That was their second field goal. All right. 
Then over here, you got a pass play. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's broken up. Gets batted away. And let's see this one here. Oh, this is a completed pass. Duffy Lehman throws a pass on which Barnum 10 made a spectacular diving catch at the five-yard line to set up the play for Strong's placement. So, I mean, uh, there was a pass. He got the ball right here. He just threw it. It's coming down, down over here. Right here. He's throwing it to him, number 10. They made a spectacular dive and catch at the five yard line. So I, I, the, the goal line is here. There's the goal. So I don't, I don't know the ball, or maybe he catches it and he runs to the five. Who knows? I don't know. But this is uh, there were 45 seconds left to play. It came down to the last minute, right? Bo Russell dropped back to the 15-yard line for a field goal attempt would have lifted the Washington Redskins to a 10-9 victory of the Giants, the second largest crowd in the history of professional football, a vast gathering of 62,530 watch tents with excitement. The largest crowd was over 80,000. It was in the first season of the, the Giants' existence in 1925. The Bears came in to play the Giants, and the guy, the Giants, um, um, uh, there was over 80,000 fans watched that game. That was the largest at the time. A hush settled over the polo grounds as the drama-laden struggle for the Eastern Championship of the National Football League reached its pulsating climax. Back snapped the ball to Frankie Philcock. Chuck. Crouched tensely to place the oval on the ground. Back went Russell's foot as it swung in the arc that meant triumph or defeat. Now, you got to remember the way they're writing this. This is because most of the people don't see the game. It's not like you got direct TV where you can watch every game all the time. I mean, that's not the way it is. Um, you know, uh, you know. so they're writing the article and make it, you know, so, so you feel like you've been there. You know, they really give it a good storyline and all that and everything. Through the early darkness of a dreary day, the ball spun in its lazy flight. Higher and higher it rose until it fell with a sudden thud in the mud in front of the clubhouse. When referee Bill Halloran waved his arms sideways in negative motion while a thunderous roar burst forth from the crowd. Pandemonium reigns on the field. Russell had missed, and thus it was that the Giants retained their Eastern title 9-7 to and earned the right to meet the Green Bay Packers at Milwaukee next Sunday for the World Crown. Pandemonium broke loose when Halloran gave his inexorable signal of failure, of the failure. The infuriated Redskins coach, Ray Flaherty, rushed out onto the gridiron. Washington players manhandled Halloran and umpire Tom Thorpe. Fist fights broke out in the stands in a scene of wild confusion while the 211-pound Russell unashamedly shed tears of disappointment and dismay. The Merrymen won on three field goals, a 40-yarder by Ward Cuff, a 19-yarder by Ken Strong, and a 15-yarder by Cuff once more, one in each of the first three periods. Meanwhile, the New Yorkers rising to the heights like the money players they are, shackled and dreaded Washington attack at every turn. Once the Redskins had a first down on the Giants' one-yard line in their only real offensive threat of the first half. Three plays later, it was New York's ball on the 20 as Tuffy Lehman's made an end zone interception. So, if they didn't have an interception there, they could have kicked the field goal, and they still might have won the game. But it is what it is, guys. Except for this one, the pupils of the stout Steve Owen dominated this game completely for three quarters. Where turn this battle topsy-turvy was a block by Wee Willie Wilkin of a punt by Len Barnum. Clyde Shugart recovered the weird bouncing ball on the New York 19 and immediately the fray took on a new complexion. Washington had been helpless along the ground all during the battle, and when the Redskins tried to run once more, Phil Chalk was tossed for a one-yard loss. So through the air, the Capitol Troop struck as Phil Chalk, a great player all day, wafted a crossover pass into the end zone. Barnum should have battled it down, batted it down, but he missed, and the long arms of 
Bob Masterson wrapped around the ball for a touchdown. Masterson also kicked the extra point, and Washington went wild. The Redskins were back in the game, even though there was only five minutes and there were only five minutes and 34 seconds left. Dick Todd, more slippery than a cake of soap, ran back a punt for 30 yards and a first down on the 47. Phil Chalk and Todd carried to the 28, and with a Phil Chalk flipped a pass that John Spirita caught on a seven and a half. Up crack, flinging Frank to the five as the huge hands on the clubhouse clock were racing to join each other. Only 45 seconds were left as Flaherty gave Russell a slap on the back and sent him in. This was the extra timeout, and the ball moved back to the 10 for some reason. Lehman slid off the Giants bench on his knees, buried his eyes in his arms, and said a prayer out loud. Stout Steve Owen chewed nervously on a cigar that had gone out long before. Then came the mist that turned the polo grounds into a madhouse. Booze and cheers mingled in the semi-darkness and floated up to the arc lights that alone made play possible. The Redskins swarmed on the field with Ed Justice, the most indignant of them all. So, heck of a game. Redskins could have won. Giants wind up winning. But the Giants wind up winning the last game of the season. 9-7 to seven, to give him a record of 9-1-1 one, and one, to send him into the, um, the 1939 championship game. Now, here's a picture of the championship game here. This is the first touchdown that the uh, the Packers scored. Um, right here. All right. We got, boop, Milt Gantenbein. Milt Gantenbein right here caught the pass for a touchdown. Now, there's seven players here. Two of them are in the Hall of Fame. This guy over here, Don Hudson, and our very own Mel Hine. The year before 1938, Mel Hine was a linebacker, but he was also a center, a very good center. <laughs> he was a center, and he won the MVP in 1938. The only time you're ever going to have an offensive lineman win an MVP award. This guy right here, Mel Hine. But uh, this is, I mean, Funky looking uh, goalposts, huh? Very, very funky looking goalposts. This one meant title. But what we got here, we got the uh, championship game here. The 1939 NFL championship game was the seventh league championship game of the National Football League, held on December 10th at Wisconsin State Fair Park in West Allis, Wisconsin. A suburb west of Milwaukee, the 9-1-1 Giants were the defending champions because they beat the Packers the year before in 1938. They beat them 23-17 in the championship game. And they traveled west to Wisconsin to play the Western Division champion Green Bay Packers, who were 9-2. The teams had met in the previous year's title game in New York City, which the Giants won by six points, but did not play each other in the 1939 regular season. For the title game in Wisconsin, the Packers were favored by 10 points. Yeah, I mean, the, the Packers were a very good team, and they were they were the home team. Those Packers scored a touchdown in the first quarter, which is like what I just showed you right here. Uh, right here. This is, the, this is the first down. This is the, the, the touchdown in the, the first quarter. It was 7 nothing at halftime. Right, 7 nothing at halftime. See, the Packers here scored 7. Milt Gantenbein, 7-yard pass from Arnie Hett Herber. Gave the Packers a 7 0 lead. They dominated in the second half to win 27 0 and secure their fifth title, two more than any other franchise. The Giants had, Giants had won three fran uh, titles as well. Packers had won five after this year. At the time, it was the highest attended sporting event in the Milwaukee area. So you said that the Packers scored uh, 10 points in the third quarter and 10 points in the fourth quarter just to. Pretty much pull it away. The highest attendance at 32,000 people. This <laughs> sort of championship game. 32,379. So it wasn't much of a championship game, but it was a heck of a season, both for the Eastern Division and the Western Division. It came down to the last week of the season. Very exciting football. It's just a shame that there's not more write up on it. There's not much more uh, film footage of it. It is what it is. But 1939 was a very, very exciting football season. And it was a very exciting football season in the history of the New York Giants. <laughs>